Kan du sänka ljudet lite bara? Om det är okej. Okay. Du måste inte av. Nej men du kan sänka bara så jag inte får basen i, i micken. Jag ser ju när den reagerar. Så se på det. All right, guys. I think we're live. Um. Uh oh. Uh oh. No. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Agi, and this is CPL preseason um, show, talk show, and we're gonna do a team reveal and a map pool reveal. And with me, I'm having three very special people. Um, you guys can introduce yourself. We can start with uh, Snipe. Uh, sure. Hey, guys. Hope you know who I am. Uh, admin of CPL, of course. Ready to do some uh, talk show, team reveal, map pool. Hope you guys are all hyped. Yeah. And then we have uh, Baram or Site Zero. Hi. I'm one of the two casting coordinators that we got running for this season. And we're going to try to explain what's going on for casting later but mainly just get the season set up so. yeah and then we have strum carlin uh hey guys i'm just a regular member of staff so not admin tier but i helped a lot with building the team so that's why i'm here awesome everyone's super quiet apparently yeah um upping your um uh, volume now i think it should be better now and hopefully with the check and let us know. Yeah. I couldn't hear Snipe when he was talking. Can you hear me now? Should be good now, right? Can you hear me now? Yep, I, I can can't. hear you. Is, is Snipe talking? Yeah. Can you hear me? I can't hear Snipe. <laughs> yeah, what the, the hell? This is just rude. You're just ignoring him blatantly like this? Yeah. Wow. I don't know why. Strum, you're Turn being... Kind of a douche. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, okay, he's just really quiet. Yeah, turn me up. There, okay, yeah, I got you. It's probably the sensitivity thing. Yeah. Yeah. You had me change, yeah. Um, but everyone should be fine. Oh. Um, well, I'm, I hear you all very good. Uh, so it should be... Should be good now, I hope. Yeah. All right. Only if you spam at least. Yeah. You gotta spam to get us more viewers. Yeah. That's all I need. <laughs> so uh, I think we're gonna start off with uh, Snipe, um, uh, oh. and you get to talk a bit about the new season and the changes um, compared to last season. So go ahead. Okay. Uh, sure. So yeah, we had that vote. Hopefully, most of you voted. Uh, if you wanted bigger teams with more access to more coaches, um, something we wanted to try for a few seasons, and uh, it did win the vote. So you know that's what we got going on. So we're gonna have less teams, but much bigger teams. Uh, gives you more access to coaches because sometimes in the past we had where um, not everyone got necessarily a coach of their race, uh, but this time I do believe each team has at least one coach that coaches each race. So that should be helpful. Um, and then other changes. Well, I guess we're keeping both best of three. That won the vote. There was some talk of best of two. I was a little weary, a little leery about that, but <laughs> best of three won still, so that's fine. I think best um, of two would have been better. People, people don't even know. They don't see it. Yeah. Well, they want to see a winner, right? Um, but yeah, uh, we added like a new tier this season as well. As well, kind of calling it tier zero at the moment. 
for lack uh, of yeah. anything better. Um, exactly. Did you have something you wanted to say more about that? Or? Mm, no, okay. but it's interesting. We're going to see the teams uh, pretty soon. Um, but it's cool that we have four tiers now instead of three. Yeah. Um, so uh, some players that might think they should be in a different tier just know that the tier ranges has, have changed a little bit to try and include. So since we have larger teams, we can kind of um, make the MMR, MMR range a little bit smaller per team or per tier. For the teams uh, as can, well, you so. can you explain what tier zero is and how it affected the other tiers since you're saying it changed? Um, okay, well, tier zero is essentially uh, the best of the best. Some of these players signed up as assistant coaches and stuff as well and are willing to play. Um, format is still a little TBD on that. I have to work with a wordy. Uh, we're still working out some of the details. But anyway, um, they're like basically 1750-ish plus. And then tier one would be around 1600 to 1750. And then tier two, 1400, 1600. And then tier three is anything under that. All right. Well, um, it's going to be interesting to see um, which place ends up in which tier. Um, I think I should be tier zero, right? And Strum should be tier one. Yeah, something like that. No, nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we that. You heard it live. <laughs> Strum for tier one? Yep, Strum for tier, tier one. Three, please. <laughs> tier three, please. Definitely not tier three. All right, and um, also, um, before we start, um, the team reveals um, it would be nice f to hear from uh, Barum about the casting in the CPL this season, because it's going to be a bit uh, different from, from previous seasons as well, right? Um, so, uh, different is in a way, because it's still going to be the same experience people have had before. They're still going to be getting cast from random people that just want to step up and cast some games. So you get to watch random content through the week, the same way we've used to do it. But one of the biggest changes is that we're going to have a set time every week for the featured match of the week. Whatever looks like the most competitive or most entertaining, we're going to try to get that at a set time. So maybe if you're like, oh, I hope I get casted, we can make sure that everyone's getting casted through that kind of featured match of the week. And we kind of have a little more... Like the ability to promote it since it's actually going to be a more a stable time slot. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, I really like that idea of having a, a game of the week or games of the week. Um, sounds very interesting. Uh, also, uh, new to this season is team admins. Strom, you want to tell us about the team admins? Yeah, so I had, I worked a lot with building the teams, like I said, um, and along with the kind of um, inactivity, like just working against uh, having inactive teams, one of the things that has happened in past is that the lineups and the replays where teams fall on the shoulders of the coaches instead of the players, so then it becomes kind of a burden for some coaches. And it's, I think it discourages people from actually wanting to coach, even if they might have a little bit of time to help out. So last season on my team, I was on MCMS, we had players doing all the lineups and replays and it worked really well. So this season we're going to have a couple of people on each team that are like d dedicated to focus on that. So, that the coaches don't have to put time into that and they can focus all of their energy on actually helping players and not having to worry about the <laughs> uh, the um, the lineups. And yeah, we had a little bit of that from Team Dragon as well. We had a June, our replay overlord really helped out, alleviated some of the little menial responsibilities to help the coaches out. Yeah. Um... Uh, I was going to ask, though... Um, but like just on the the CPL stream, didn't wasn't there talk of a night of educational content as well, or am I misremembering? No, this? there no there there was. It's the uh, it's still something I have to work out with coaches, and it's really something I couldn't discuss before teams were formed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so that that is another plan that we want to do again for like regular content because you always hear this kind of question. Someone comes into the Discord and they're like, 
hey, I'm interested in learning Brutal. What should I do? And everyone goes, like, you can look at Liquipedia to read these builds that are 10 years old. Or you can watch the Day 9 series from two years ago at an hour an episode. <laughs> so it's like, it's very hard to say, like, we have a good source of, if you want to learn in a more reasonable manner, where should you go? So one of the things I want to do this season is, and like, it's going to be various things, maybe teaching a build order or reviewing replays. But I want to have the coaches, if they have some time, or like the assistant coaches, like a stable time per week to help review something that we can broadcast to people that aren't in their team, or maybe people that couldn't make it into the league, they're on the wait list, to help people improve in that way as well. It really kind of makes CPL a little more of a central hub for, I'm new to Brood War and want to improve, this is where you should start. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to like hop on that and say one of the things that got me starting playing was actually Jay Yoon's little series he did on all of the non-mirror matchups. So this kind of content reminds me a little bit of that. So I hope that that will, I don't know, it helped me a lot to want to start playing the game. So I think that it's definitely a good idea. Yeah, it sounds great. And I was also on team MCMS uh, last year and uh, admins did a great job in, in our team. So I think it's good that we have team admins and also, um, yeah. Um, all right. So you guys stoked to see the teams? Yeah. Yeah. Should we start off with team number one? Um, Let's see here. I'm going to put it up here on the screen. There we go. Um, all right. So, this is uh, Team 1. It's going to be coached by Cross, Hawk, Rogi, uh, Armada, and GTR. Uh, tell us, uh, Strom, I guess you were uh, pretty involved in creating the teams. Uh, and also Snipe, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Strong. Yeah, it was a team effort. <laughs> For sure. I mean, I was sick the last couple of weeks, so uh, she definitely helped out a lot. Another... I don't think we would have got this done otherwise. <laughs> this weekend, anyway. Just want to shout out, Queen also helped out a lot with this. Yes. Not on the show, but put in a lot of legwork as well. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. All right, so go ahead. Tier. Uh, if we start uh, with Tier 3. I just want to say I'm like I have your stream open right now and the oh no it is legible if you have a full screen yeah okay. I hope it is it's, it's, it's fine the... it looks fine okay okay I just have it on small screen and I can't read the name all right That's okay because I know who's there all right so the team number one so this is kind of we had a lot of requests for from players who signed up for like people and coaches they wanted to play with again. Um, and because we've had more teams <clears throat> in past seasons than we do this season, we kind of had to, like, compound some ideas. So Team 1 is kind of Neo Team Drag slash Neo MCMS. Um, yeah, all right. So we have... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, with all the Australian players. So we have uh, Crossy and Hawk to uh, uh, North American Zerg Titans. I recruited uh, Roigi as a Terran coach. We have Armada, who was on Team Drag last time, and GTR, who is an uh, Australian Protoss player. And then Neblime is assistant coaching, also an Australian player. And then Art of Turtle, another Zerg assistant coach. Um, so yeah, basically you have the North American players from MCMS, because we kind of had a Euro uh, and a split and then we have the people from team drag that wanted to stick together and then we have every australian player um in the league on this team so we can Hopefully kind of get them all in one spot <laughs> yeah, yeah all right i guess we want to do a couple shout outs to players on here yeah go ahead anything standing out to anyone uh, so one of the big things, not just this team, but I noticed in general, a lot of the people in Tier 3 were new to this season, it felt like. A lot of names I did not recognize from prior seasons. And I think that's really cool that we're still building the player base in this kind of league. Yeah. That's very cool. Uh, I don't recognize any of the Tier 3 players, I think. Yeah. Actually, there Shave is... Um, yeah, Shave Dave is why. So... 
that is he was on MCMS last season oh, yeah. and he did very well so I think he's going to be a very strong tier three uh, Terran player and definitely a candidate to possibly move up a tier this season well that sounds um, cool because he was in um, two seasons ago he was actually on team dragon and kind of was a little bit lower end so if you're saying he's moving up the league's doing his job yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's doing really well very active player really nice guy um and then I know have... I know another two as well. I think that's like seven eight is yep. the Discord name. Yeah, oh, so okay. that's another yeah, I've like, seen him around. older older name. Um, but uh, a lot of people like they're new. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I, there's a bunch of names I see here that I don't know from CPL, but were in like an RSL or like fake fans beginner Sunday tournaments that he was doing. Okay, so, yeah, like, I've really been following that. Yeah. Um. The other, I guess the other shout out here is we have uh, Queen and QuakeCom. So we have three girls on this team, which oh, obviously cool. means it's the best team. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. hmm. Get me hmm. off this team. <laughs> 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 yeah, we do have a lot of the uh, staff members on this team too. Yeah, um, I yeah. noticed that. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah. this... <laughs> yeah. Mm. So, this so, is uh, why we uh, need uh, team okay. admins. Mm. It's not okay. stacked that's, that's at all. We're yes. not corrupt. <laughs> yeah, so you can't speak honestly. Agi, what do you think about all the staff being on one team, pretty much? Um, well, if this team is winning this season, uh, I'm going to be a bit concerned about um, all the cash that you're holding there, Snipe. Um, <laughs> And you're not you're not even trying to hide the cash in your hand here. Uh, so I mean, you can see that it's forty bucks. It's fine. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> well, that's a lot of money in in the brood war scene. So <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I actually I actually am not sure that this is the the team candidate to win. Like it's it's a very active team. I think. Yeah. Um, just knowing a lot of players on here, but we have a couple of kind of like lower like people that have moved up a tier since last season so might be on the lower end of their tiers yeah um like Zamnal, very strong um mongolian zerg player last season in mcms he like 10 would in tier two but i think he hasn't played in a bit so he's going to be kind of lower end of tier one same kind of thing with like irk ashen very much improved player um uh, last season but was tier three so has moved up to tier two and we'll see kind of how we're doing with the with the players that have moved up might not be quite as strong it, especially in tier two there is a good amount of people that did move up from tier three last season into the tier two so yeah 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 that's true that's true yeah all right so should we move on to team two let's do it yeah let's do it i'm noticing that rk Han is in tier zero here um yeah in team one uh, yeah he yeah so we that do have a, a European team, request. but yeah, he wanted Crossy as a coach. Mm-hmm, I see. Yeah, so. All right, all right. Yeah, uh, so let's go into team two here. Um, there it is. And I'm right away noticing um, uh, that IRK Brochette is signed up as a coach, which I'm very happy about. And then we have Tai 2, Telecom, Future, 80s mullet and I got sunshine along with IRK father who is an assistant coach I guess cool team yeah you guys want to talk about oh our team looked corrupt this team looks pretty strong too <laughs> this team actually looks really strong to me <laughs> yeah I um, um, want to start off snipe I started off the last one sure uh just going on with what you said, this team looks strong, especially in Tier 2. I'd say there's a lot of strong-looking players that were definitely borderline. Like, well, are they Tier 1? Are they Tier 2? Especially based on with the new MMR changes. But I left them Tier 2, so they got. I think they have a really strong Tier 2 lineup. Um, and their Tier 0, I mean, Ben Elton apparently was really strong. I've heard lots of things like, oh, he might be too strong to play. Uh, he did lose a couple matches, but he won most of his games. And I did put them in their groups against other Tier 0 type players. Um, who else do we have that sticks out here? Uh, Brochette, IRK Brochette, was a player last season. Yeah. On um, Goon Squad, I believe, right? Zion yeah. Zion is his AK, so good to see he's moved up to coaching. Yeah, I would say uh, like, some, well. 
yeah, I was gonna say father is like the big standout because that is like a CPL like prime example story of someone who really took the league seriously. Yeah. Stepped yeah, I mean, last year this time, father was like fourteen hundred MMR, and now he's like eighteen hundred, pushing higher. Um, he does tilt sometimes, but yeah. he is very, very strong Terran player and definitely someone that you should be keeping your eye on. Yeah. Uh, other than that, like one thing, it wasn't from CPL, but crazy in tier two. He was in the RSL three, a convert from StarCraft two, just has like good baseline mechanics and learning the game. He's imp- he takes the game seriously. He is improving really fast. Yeah, I was gonna say like as far as like tier two goes, Snipe was saying it looks really strong. Least Warp Gates and Crazy all seem like really strong tier two players to Yeah, me. very strong tier um, two players. <clears throat> yeah. And Adis in tier one. This this team is like kind of also the uh El Master Discord team in a way. Because I do see like I see a lot of names that I recognize from there. But Adis I think really knows how to win games. So, um, I think he, he was going to do quite well. on In Tier 3, some of the players that were kind of... I know IRK Father drafted Smoochie specifically uh, in Tier 3, so I'm not familiar with these names. I think FSEC was at the at Montreal Dreamhack. Uh, so, we right. wanted to... Uh, and so was Tai 2. So, they probably have met each other. Yeah, anytime a Tier 3 gets... Like particularly, hey, can I have that one? That's a worrying sign. That's a future tier two in the making. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm uh, I'm very happy to see that there's um, a lot of tier three players that, or not a lot, but there are tier three players that still has uh, clan IDs or clan tags, which is kind of cool to see that uh, there's players from Ash, Rev, uh, VT in the last team. Um, so actually, that's a little aside that I think we can take just a moment to talk about. Because, um, like, you think clans, it does feel like, oh, you gotta be good enough to get in this clan. But like you're saying, there's some lower end players in these clans as well. You're in Urk, and so is Strom. So you guys could speak to this a little bit. What's the value for a low player getting into a clan or trying to pursue? Um, I think it's uh, good both for the. For the good players in a clan, uh, like in IRK, we have two teams uh, that we can. Um, the good players can use the the team two players to like practice maps or just help out uh, in different ways, uh, and it motivates the less good players as well to to try to get into to the eight teams. So it's a win-win situation and it's always good to bring in new faces and you can't always just recruit good players you need to have to have a balanced teams and you need to also work for the community and not just think about yourself and winning things yeah i think just as like a lower mmr player who has a clan tag i think it's really it's really nice to feel like you have like a home base because there's lots of these really great discords like CPL and uh, L Masters Discord, but I like being able to kind of belong to IRK and that I know that if I need help, um, I can ask for help or I can get games from my teammates. It's really it's just nice to have kind of like a home base to to kind of fall back on. And then I think it's really good for teams too because players like IRK Father that was recruited when he was like 1400 MMR now is a really legit B team player and takes all kinds of games in Clan War and stuff. So I think that the the team kind of initiative is moving to recruit uh, like newer players who they see have potential and try and make them into higher level players and i think honestly that's kind of the way that we're going to grow the scene in general um, yeah to bring, keep bringing new people in yeah definitely definitely all right so anything else you want to say about this team um who is hubert uh, neutron in tier zero i don't think i recognize that idea to be with 
Yeah, I didn't recognize him either. He requested to be with 80s Mullet and Future. Oh, right, all right. Um, yeah. yeah. But also, shout out to I Got Sunshine, who's a coach this season and was a player last season, so that's very cool. Um, a big shout out to Tai Tu, because he's kind of a Titan CPL coach. He, I think he coached like three <laughs> yeah. teams last season when there were some <laughs> coaches falling inactive, so... Imagine what he's going to be able to do when his efforts are all focused on one team. Yeah. He's very good Zerg player and good good with coaching all races. So Yeah. Excited to have him back. Alright. So should we head into team three? Three? Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Team three, Sam Yang Fire. Three. Yeah. Here we have Faust yeah. Kate Kidency. Yeah. And Ver and Relentless Seagrun and also a Coaches Dragoon and Little Chava. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I guess right off the bat, shout out to Little Chava and actually I missed Art of Turtle on Team One. Uh, both of them, we kind of had put a lot of players on the teams already that they like, kind of where they requested to be uh, at the beginning and. But then we had like a lot of tier three players left over, and both uh, Chava and Art of Turtle went through a lot of the replays and picked uh, the draft lists for their teams. So just kind of shout out to them. They they know the tier three players on their teams already because they've looked at the replays, which is really great to see. Yeah. All right. So. Um, any so players standing out here? This is Neo Samyang Fire. It also has, um, I, we kind of threw, there was a lot of players that speak Korean. Um, and they there was kind of a couple of them that requested to be with other players that also speak Korean. So Fox, Jinjin, Offense, I think Kanzaki. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, I'm not sure about Intact, and Te but Teza and West Coast Marine all speak Korean. So, and uh, Kadenzi obviously is in Korean time zone. So that's kind of why they're all together. And there's also kind of a heavy tier one Terran lineup on this team because we have their coaching, who's about a, a 2K Terran player and our, I think, probably our strongest um, NA Terran coach. So. Well, I'm noticing one interesting thing here. That's Chess C in tier three. <laughs> How the hell did he end up there? He wasn't well, tier two last oh, season, oh, right? This this is no <laughs> flame, but have you watched him play Terran yet? Oh yeah, he's in the Terran's <laughs> color. All right, cool. Yes, he's playing Terran <laughs> this season. That is why I did have him in tier two to start, but he didn't do so well in his group, so he got moved down. <laughs> All right. I do, I do expect him to be one of the kind of players that might promote midway through the season. It, like, because he has the base like mechanics of the game down really well, where it's not gonna be a problem. But with some of the games I've seen of him in the preseason, he just doesn't know build orders, or there's like weird situations, <laughs> like oh, I need like one more SCB here, or I lose the wall and I'm done. <laughs> so like th these will be quick things to fix, but they're not fixed yet. <laughs> <laughs> like our Terran coaches have some work cut out. Yeah, for them. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess shout out on in tier one Fox is a very strong tier one Terran player and he practices a lot so shout out there i see him around all the time most of these um, terrans in tier one are the koreans too and they all seem to think they should be yeah, lower yeah. than they actually are they're all like oh we should be tier two <laughs> i do like I just, Fox would destroy. <laughs> yeah i just i feel yeah. a little better Jin -Jin signed up i remember i remember in pre that played <laughs> against offense and he just destroyed me i'm like well, how's this guy gonna be a tier two and i see him in tier one i'm like okay that makes more sense now yeah, <laughs> yeah. i actually played him in second week of preseason and he was quite strong i did end up winning but definitely uh, i would say a tier one player yeah i also noticed seeing zookeeper is back he took a break last season right yeah yeah, so it's yeah, good he to see signed him up back. late, but we managed to get him in. So yeah. got him in with his buddy Chessy. Maybe we'll get some more of their casting duos. Yeah, I hope always, so. Uh, they're always they're a high people's, cast. They're yeah. the people's champion for that. <laughs> yeah, kind of for stuff. sure. <laughs> Everyone loved their casting, so I'm hoping they come back for some casting this season. <laughs> yeah, I love their casting as well. I remember that they were the first ones to cast one of my games, I think, and um, I did some cheese like I always do. 
and <laughs> they just went nuts. <laughs> they said a lot of yeah. bad words and stuff they wanted me to do to them, uh, but they're really funny <laughs> guys. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. We also have the uh, the dynamic tier three duo, duo Oni Chichi and uh, Proxius uh, underscore R six uh, signed up as friends, so that's nice to see on tier three. I've seen them both be active in the chat, so that's good. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah. yeah. I do. I do have to say, I I'm going to throw out a little bit of my condolence because uh, I see Grimfang with the purple. That's saying they play a race pick, and that sounds like it's so much harder to coach, especially at a low level. Yeah, it's like maybe you're just trying to dodge a matchup you don't want to play. <laughs> <laughs> I think his main thing is he hasn't actually picked a race yet. Um, oh, he's actually, uh, uh. Intact's friend, and he's like, "Oh, can, can you sign me up late?" And I was like, "Okay, sure, I'll throw you in somewhere." Um, but he hasn't decided <laughs> which race he wants to play yet, so maybe his coaches can help him with that. Are you just revealing to the public that she's like, oh, it's this guy's friend. I'm just going to throw him in somewhere. It's, are you just like wanting the Benjamins at this point? <laughs> corrupt. I mean, corrupt people. Come on, yes. So much corruption right now. This is crazy. That's why I'm holding those dollar bills. <laughs> All right. So mm, let's check uh, the last team, team number four, shall we? Right, yeah. Team Euro. Yeah. Team Euro. We or have... in my notes, exchange rate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we have four coaches here. Hartos, uh, Master A, and uh, Eriodor, Cryok, Dentarg, and as uh, assistant coach, Linga Pampa and Silver. This is a pretty interesting uh, team, uh, in my opinion. Uh, first of all, I'm noticing that there's... A couple of Russian players, and uh, we haven't had that many Russian players before, so that's pretty cool that they have decided to sign up for this. So, so yeah, uh, it's, you're, um... I, I was gonna say, Agi, you're on, you're on this team, yeah, and it's a lot of European players. I assume you know a good portion of them. How do you feel about how the balance of the team worked out, considering this team was mostly made to make sure everyone's in a similar time zone so they could actually practice together? Um, I think it looks pretty good, uh, pretty balanced compared to the other ones. Um, uh, yeah, so, um, I don't know many of the tier 3 players, I think. Maybe, uh, Fake Fiend and Buenaventura, of course. Um, but then there's some new faces, so, um, yeah. Uh. Thesis and Tom B were both in RSL. All right. Um, so I know that they're active players. So is Buenaventura. Just shout out to him in general, actually. Very, very positive. Like, <laughs> great mindset player. Really fun guy. Yeah, I, would, I would say, like, him and Durkovich. They're, they're, like, they've been long-standing Zerg players at the lower end, and they just stay positive about the game. Don't get discouraged. Both of them are inspirations. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, um, I would say this team particularly, just like looking at the names, has a very strong Protoss lineup because I know Butzel Bear from casting some of his preseason, he is very strong and I don't expect him to stay in tier 3. Go Metas is really strong, Worst is really strong, like you got a lot of good Protoss players on this yeah. team. Yeah, Worst and yeah. Stan are both top 4 of RSL um, and they're, they're buddies, they're friends, so I know that they're very active. And then uh, Zini, uh, Old, old hat MCMS, shout out, uh, was also tier three last season, but yeah. I think very up and coming, doing really well. Um, and all of these Protoss players have the joy to work with uh, Master Ray, who is a great Protoss coach. So I actually expect to see a lot of improvement from, especially because we've noticed a couple of Protoss players here already that practice a lot. So I think that they're really going to be on the up and up this season. Definitely. Yeah, I, would, I would say the same thing about Ariador. That's a name that I remember from way back when I joined TL during the Cusp era. That's a name that's just been around in the scene forever. So he's he's got like a wealth of experience to help people. Yeah. yeah. I, I see someone in the chat asking about uh, Cryoc. So... Uh, Cryoc is here to help the Terran players specifically. We didn't have anybody to help the European Terran players. 
Um, so I did ask him to step in and he said he would be available to help. So he's specifically going to be around to answer questions and maybe look at some replays for the tier one and tier two Terran players because there isn't another Terran coach on this team. So that's what he is there for. Yeah. So he should be active in that sense. That's something I definitely appreciate that you were very focused on during team buildings. Like, let's have the teams be a little bit balanced as far as race goes. Because you didn't see, like, any, like, it's a tier three, it's nine Zergs or any nonsense like that. So all the teams are a balanced race, and you made sure every race had a coach. Yeah, I think that's one of the advantages, like, benefits of having bigger teams is that we can do that. And the other thing about not having coaches be responsible for lineups um because that's one of the thing like a, things a couple of the coaches that i uh that i have talked to i was like it's, it's fine like you won't have to deal with lineups and i think that that's like a big relief um for them coming on the team because they feel like they have a little bit more leeway with that yeah and uh as kicks was saying here in the chat as well that uh Eriador is uh playing a lot of random, so he can pretty much coach every single race, I think, as well. So, it's going to be good to have uh, uh, both Cryok and, and Eriador for, for our Terran players. Uh, also noticing that Silver has signed up as uh, assistant coach, uh, but also as a player, which is yep. interesting. Uh, he's pretty high ranked in ladder. How was your uh, thoughts about him? I actually asked him to assistant coach uh, kind of afterwards. He had signed up as only a player, but it was looking like it might only be Linga Pump, Pump for Zerg help. And I know he's really active, but I wanted to kind of see if we could get somebody else there to help him out. Of course, now we have Ariador as well. Um, but he, he said he would be uh, available to answer questions and, and play and stuff. So Yeah, it's yeah. going to be good for our good Zerg uh, player. Yeah, for the Russian players as well. Um, yeah. So, very good to see him, see him uh, putting time into to CPL because he's very active in the in the community and in the Brood War scene, and it's costing a lot of of games. So, really great. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Jesse and Lelina too, our kind of our girl representation on Team Four. Jesse in particular, very strong player. Yeah. So right. good to see. Yeah, good to see perfect. Tier One. Yeah, this is actually for Jesse in particular, because last season she was on Protoss, now on Terran, and that isn't the main race to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, she's using CPL to help improve her off races, and, like, it just level up her game overall. It's, I can't even imagine it. It's insane to me. Yeah, she's pretty yeah. decent with all the races, so it's, it's, it's really cool that she can just pick whatever yeah. race she wants to practice for all season. Um... <laughs> So and, now that we got all the teams revealed, yeah, can we get? Is it possible to get them all on screen that we can like make our predictions just for fun about how the season might go? Looking at each team, of course. Here we go. Um, Especially if someone joined in a little late and missed their particular team reveal. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Team one, team two, team three, and team four. All right, so what I want to do is I want to go, it's like we're going to go at each tier, what team do you think has the strongest of each tier? Oh, man, so, this is so organized. Oh, this is going to be so hard. <laughs> no, we're we're, 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 we're going to have something that people go back to and start calling us out. Yeah. I want to, like, no, we're doing this. <laughs> so. Man. Okay. Okay. So, so, so we're going to just address this straight away. Who do you think has the strongest tier zero? The assistant coaches that also play. Yes, Hefty quit. Um, I'm going to say uh, Team 4. I agree with Aggie. I think Team 4. Yeah, I, I think as a group, Tier 4 definitely has like the most overall. Uh, I would think individually, Father is like prime target. <laughs> but like, Father's very, uh, very just... good, but he's actually at the lower end of MMR for Tier 0. Because he's about 1,800. But um, like Linga Pumpa, Narsal, Silver, and Jedi One, I think all push nineteen hundred. Yeah. 
Yeah, but the, yeah. the thing for father that makes me like think of him at the top of the list is that he understands what it's like to have to go through the learning process because he's done it so recently. Yeah. Yeah, true. That is true. That is true. Um, Chava also very strong tier zero player on team three. Neo Samyang. Um, Han is strong. pretty yeah, decent as well. If he I gets mean, active. all the teams have strong players. So it's not yeah. like we're yeah. saying yeah, like yeah, this yeah. team is miles ahead of everyone else. But we're just gonna, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. gonna cause a little drama. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> Well, I know so during preseason, no one won. No one won all their matches or lost all their matches out of these tier zero players. So um, definitely balanced, I would say. You know, they could take games off of each other for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, so tier one, who do you think? I'll uh, I'll start. I think team th uh, team three. Uh, you got Fox. You got offense that seemed really good. So if, even if he's just on the up and learning, I know uh, Fujikura is really strong. I just feel like like the names I recognize from the teams. It seems like Team 3 to me. I would say actually Team 1 is probably comparable, but I'd, I would still put my money on Team Yeah, I, I like the look of, of Team 3's lineup as well. Team 1 has some strong players, like, of course, Snipe. And World Blue, I think, has been a little bit inactive, but when he's in form, he's very good. And BT George actually also works a lot with Jayun, and I know he's a very strong macro Zerg player. Uh, but I think overall we have a couple on team one that are kind of bump ups from tier two last season so i think maybe overall team three has the stronger lineup yeah i think if you were gonna like address it and maybe the way you would format i'm gonna put this lineup like for the match for the week and i want to like win there's a couple really high-end players in uh all the teams so it's hard to say but i would just yeah. say overall skill because they're gonna practice with each other yeah um, I'm going to say Team 4 is looking pretty strong in their Tier 1 lineup. There's a lot of strong players. I've played a lot of these, especially the Zerg players. I've played all three of them, and they're all really strong. Yeah, Auge, I've, of seen, course, I've, seen, I've seen Yanta. Yanta. I've seen Yanta. It's, he's definitely strong. Yeah, yeah I mean, Yanta yeah, beat me yeah, in preseason. Yanta also practices a lot. Yeah. Yanta practices a lot. He's always on online looking for games. So. Zinkler just got top 4 in BSL. Yeah, and Chobo League. I've played with Jesse. We just father. talked how good she is, so. Yeah. Yeah. So. Mm, I would probably say uh, team three as well. Um, I think they they look to have a very strong, strong tier one lineup. Um, yeah. Yeah. Someone in the chat uh, mentioning we're, we're not gonna address who it is. <laughs> like he doesn't have knowledge. We're not gonna let him self promote his team. <laughs> <laughs> but I do agree. Ty is here now. No. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Cough, cough, Team cough, two definitely cough. has some really good players. Um, yeah. Particularly, I just I love how Siege plays the game. I yeah. That's like super stable. <laughs> um, Shobu did very well in preseason season. I think he did start in tier two preseason, um, yeah. but really smashed it. And Doc Holiday, obviously consistent, very good Zerg player. Yeah. Also cool to see Sham two getting into tier one. Wasn't he a tier two player last season? Uh, I, I think so. He, he, he was the uh, upper maybe, tier two last season. Yeah, about... he, he kind of dropped out early. Too. Oh, yeah. Um, I did start him off in tier two for preseason, but he requested... I mean, he smashed his group. He went 4-0. Yeah. Uh, and so I put him up to tier one. Uh, he even requested... He's like, I think I'm a tier one player. So I was like, okay, I'll put you in tier one. Sure enough. All right. Sense. So, tier two. Who do you guys think? I'm not. I'm not even gonna lie. There's a Zerf couple strong least. players in each team, but I think it's team one. <laughs> I can't even hide it. I like. I've seen too many of these players play too many games. They all are really strong. <laughs> yeah. Like a good port. <laughs> um. I yeah. think team two. I think team two. Who jumps out of you at team two? That makes you say that. Uh, least warp gates. Uh, Yo, it's Flash and Y2 Kid, also both very strong. Crazy. Um, yeah, Eddie, crazy. And then I know that uh, uh, Ugnas T uh, TY is a Korean Zerg player. Um, I don't know the other two Zerg players, but I, I've seen him be active in the chat. So I don't know. Okay. I feel like that. I feel like that's a strong 
tier two lineup, and there's not really as much. Like on the other teams, there's there's a couple people that have been bumped up from tier three. Tier team two has a lot of players that haven't been bumped up to tier one. And has know? some borderline tier one. <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of borderline tier three players. Yeah. yeah. So mm. do you think there's a thing to that where you look at a team as like these players were tier two before, they're still tier two now. Like, if you were, like, imagine you're a coach for this kind of situation, is that the kind of player that you're, like, excited? It's like, oh, they're stably good at this tier, or they haven't improved as much from last season. I'd rather so have, be have with, with someone on the up and up. Mm. I don't know. I think it's hard with Brood War 2 because it, it also kind of depends a lot on on when people are active. Right? Yeah. Um, Definitely. Like when people have time to play. Uh, I think Team 4, uh, their Tier 2 looks uh, pretty interesting. Uh, because They're pro I agree particular. with that. Yeah. They're yeah, awesome they're awesome. <laughs> um, They have some players that were like moved down from Tier 1 or borderline Tier 1 as well. Like Ash Ball has been a strong player. Ash Returns played both Tier 1 and Tier 2 in preseason. Same with Flola Dribbler. Winowar Rev is an interesting case. He yeah. signed up with a low MMR. He went 4-0 in Tier 3. <laughs> then he moved into a Tier 2 group and went 4-0 again. Uh, yeah. So, um, interesting. Yeah. I, I'm Although, told he's around 1,500, so I left him Tier 2, but I almost put him Tier 1. My impression of Winowar, yeah, yeah. though, is of uh, inactivity. Because yeah. I've seen them before, yeah. and they just don't seem as an act- especially in practice. They don't. They're not as active as a lot of players. Yeah, he was on MCMS last season, and we barely heard from him all season. I think that being on a European team is probably going to help that because we were practicing a lot in the evenings uh, with Jaywon for MCMS. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think he is a strong, a strong tier two player, especially if he is more active uh, this season than he has been in the past. Very cool. All right. Um, and what about tier three guys? So the thing I look for when I'm looking at tier three is who do I know that it feels like they're not going to stay in tier three long? And I'm looking at team four because I I would bet money right now Buffs Bear is not tier three at the end of the season. Yeah, I saw some of his games that you guys were casting. He looked quite strong. Like He looked already borderline tier two for sure. Um... Who else do we got? Mm. I think Team One actually is a strong yeah. Tier Three. Like I, I haven't voted them for every for anything else, but I think Y or Shaved Ape um, seems good. I think Denny is very good. I think Fiery Chameleon. I've heard good things about people watching his games when they were doing the draft. Um, so yeah, I know, I know, I know um, another sure. two is uh, can like learn built if you like really focus with them. They just need some coaching. Yeah, yeah. And Armada, uh, active Protoss coach, so bodes well for those. I mean, there's there's active coaches on every team, though. It's very... I, I felt very good about the coach lineup that we came up with. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one thing I really liked about what we did this season compared to the prior that... Like, because we... It's hard to even say, because, like, we have two people in the show right now that are on drag and MCMS. Like, that was the teams we are representing. And we both had really, we all had good experiences, right? But there's definitely yeah. some teams that did not have quite as good, and hopefully this mitigates that a significant amount. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing we're hoping with larger teams, too. And with more people on the teams, that's more people that can help lower tiers, too, right? Like, you can speak for this, Brammer, State Zero. I, I helped a lot with our lower tier players last season yeah, on I, Team Drag as well. Yeah. So. Like, like, not saying anything about our coaching lineup for Team Drag, because they were very helpful. But I learned far more from Snipe and our Tier 2 players than I ever did from our coaches. Just because they're there to work with you and help you. Like, it's just, if you get people that want to help and will, like, give you the time for it, it doesn't matter if you're Tier 3 and it's a Tier 2 player. They still can help you. Yeah. So having more people, there's going to, like, just be that self thing. It doesn't just have to be a coach. You don't have to learn from, like, a borderline professional player, you know? I... Yeah, and coaches are, like, really especially there to help the, the, the tier one and then the, it kind of like cascades down as well, right? So that's always kind of what we're hoping for, you know, 
because sometimes the coaches might get overworked with like, oh, I got this many players, but there's only half a dozen coaches, but we got 30 players. It's like, that's a lot, right? To try and coach everybody. Yeah. But it's like coaches help the tier ones, tier ones help the tier twos kind of thing, you know, trickle down effect. So, Or even just like, because I think it's a, the, the best example was what uh, Dragon did for our team. There's just a replay channel. Throw in your replay. He'll look at it when he can and give you like really specific advice there. So it's like he doesn't have to be live coaching sessions, right? This kind of stuff. But when you have more people available to help do that, it doesn't have to be like if I'm like in tier three and I upload a replay, like I don't know why I lost to this push. There's like like on each team, there's going to be like 15, 20 people that could just be like, oh, you didn't do this, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I definitely like our, our experience on MC Mess was a little bit different. It was a lot more of like coaches kind of hanging out in voice chat when they were online and then everyone uh, playing together. So it was a lot of like playing a game and having somebody talk to you while you're playing and then going over and talking uh, about the game afterwards together. And then we did a lot of like, especially with Hawk, um, cause Hawk's very good with his builds of like planning specific, like having a specific plan for your opponent and your matchup that week. So we did a lot of, of training like that, which is a little bit different. There was less replays uh, going on, but I feel, still think it was very helpful. And it's obviously up to the coaches what kind of style they prefer to use. Yeah. 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 Um, that's, one, that's one thing I would say though, just in general about either the coaches or the people at like that tier zero, like assistant coach kind of level. There's a lot of names here I know I've seen be active. It's not just like if there's half the people, I'm like, I've never heard of you. Mm -hmm. That would be more concerning. But there's a lot of people I know are active in the community that I know they help their team. So this like I feel like this is gonna be a good season. This might be like one of those seasons where if we look at it compared to like the next CPL, we have the some of the like the highest number of people moving up a tier. Yeah, or and hopefully a high amount of people coming back. Like yeah. playing again for the next season. Mm-hmm. All right. So, which team do you think is going to win this? Well, obviously, Team One, right? Because uh, I'm on it now. <laughs> well, you all are. I don't know. I think uh, any team could really win this. Like, they all yeah. have some strong players in all tiers, I would say. It, it's just gonna come down to who yeah. gets matched up against who when kind of thing. Yeah, I think I think ignoring the team I'm on because team one definitely gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> um, if if I ignore team one, I wouldn't be surprised if it was team two. I think team two overall has a really strong players at every tier. Yeah. And yeah. Tie two, you got a future '80s mold. Like you got a lot of coaches that really care about the game and father who knows how to improve recently to help people through the process. I think tier two, the team two is really set up well. Yeah, as long as the players are, like are look, active in yeah. on that team, I think, um, I think it, they have a great shot. Um, yeah, I like. Uh, Man, team I was gonna say, yeah, I was gonna say team four. To be honest, the, the European team is strong. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think it can be because, um, like last season when we were mixed up, uh, all the European players uh, in different uh, teams. Uh, now we'll have a better shot at practicing together with coaches as well. So I hope everyone stays active on the team and that the coaches are going to be active as well. So, right. so a question that it will should be Bronga brought up now or will be brought up later if we don't. Team four is like all Europe. Yeah. How is it going to affect scheduling matches? Um, I think there will be matches played on the weekend. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, I remember from CPL season two or three, uh, we had a European team, right? With. Uh, yep. Um, yeah, and it was a bit hard because um, mostly I had to get up in the middle of the night um, <laughs> to play against. Uh, Americans. Uh, last season was a bit better because there was uh, there were European players in all all teams, so some games will be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No so. way. I did. I did wake up at five a.m. last season to play Zinkler. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, I do. I do. But think that, that was because I worked early. 
Yeah, I just hope people realize that, especially if it's a weekend and just like, because I remember I was a I was a really big uh, thing about this last season when I was playing. Yeah. If there's weekends I knew I was gonna have trouble scheduling or like I know I can't make the deadline on Sunday, I just say I can't play this week just to not even put people in that situation. But especially with like if you're playing against the European team, like when, most of my preseason matches were against Europe or Korea or something. And there's always a time on Friday or Saturday you can find a time where it would end up being like like evening for me, so it's like noon for them, and that's yeah. like reasonable for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, and that's like one match. It's not like you can only practice with your team once a week. Um, yeah, that's why I really prefer that the teams are in the same region, so the practice is better, and it'll be a little hard to schedule like matches sometimes, but you can work around it. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. I mean, you'll know in advance that you're playing the European team that week as well, right? Yeah. So yeah. you can always, if it's you fun. know that you really will have a hard time scheduling with a European time zone, you can always not sign up to play that week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, every single player, every single player on Team 4 is in a Europe time zone or like a, an Asia, like Euro compatible time zone. Like I've tracked down every single person on the team <laughs> and made... All right, so this is a different format, though, than what we've had in the past. Yeah, so four tell us about this. Four, teams, four tiers. Do we have an idea of what a match on a Sunday would look like? How many games per tier? Because like, it's got to be different than last season, I suppose. Oh, yeah, there's no way we're going to be able to do, you know, three, four, two, right? Then you'll never get playtime. <laughs> so. Yeah, so it's definitely going to be a lot larger. Uh, numbers are still to be, to be determined. But I usually go f try and aim for about half the team. So if you say there's like 10 players for Tier 1, you're maybe looking at five Tier 1 games, right? That gives you a chance to play every other week and account for people that drop out. Because um, some people inevitably end up dropping out, right? Yeah. Um, so especially uh, in like the lower tiers, I would say. Like higher uh, tiers are generally a little more reliable. But Yeah, I would say you might have to adjust that because I think right now at a glance, it's like that would be one four seven seven. <laughs> <laughs> That's no a way. lot of games. Like if unless you oh, want to okay. kill me as a casting coordinator, like no cast like yeah, nineteen but... hours of games for <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of games for sure. Yeah. But I mean there were there were eight teams last time, right? So it's like not really that many more games. That's right? true. That, that's, that is that's true. A fair point. Absolutely. Yeah. It is. Because yeah. it's only gonna be two like it'll be like team one versus team two, team three versus team four. <laughs> that's only two matchups. So it's not really more games, it's just more games between two teams. Yeah. So how many uh, how yeah. many games are you gonna uh, play uh, versus each team? How many weeks yeah, are we going for? Yeah, that's oh. what I was. That's what oh, I was okay, okay, my okay. next question. Because yeah. like, we had two round robins for the regular season last time. Yeah. Probably like three this time. Is what yep. I was saying. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it's gonna be nine weeks then. You know, All play right. Each team three times, and then playoffs after that, of course. Um, playoffs will only be two weeks, I guess, with four teams. But uh, yeah. So cool. you're looking at probably 11 weeks of games, essentially. Yeah. Very, very hype, intense kind of playoffs. Um, <laughs> so get started in a couple weeks. I mean, after this stream, we're going to add, start adding all the players to their uh, team Discord channels. Some teams like to make their own Discord so they can find it from there. But uh, we do have team Discord channels set up on CPL. And like I said, we're going to start adding all the players to that once uh, we're done with this stream. So get ready to yeah. start meeting your and teams. And we'll make you... Yeah, and yeah. we'll make, make everyone aware of like who the who the team admins are going to be um, so they can kind of keep track of what's going on. Yeah, I was actually going to uh, ask we'll about that. We'll have to get... <clears throat> yeah, we'll uh, have to make... Um, make uh, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, and, and then we won't be able to start until teams come up with logos and names. All right, so do you want to um, tell us who the admins are for each team? I idea. don't have them all set in stone yet, but I can say that on Team 2, it's definitely going to be Least, and probably he will be helped out by Y2Kid. All right. Um, on Samyang Fire, we have JPAC, and possibly Adele, and possibly someone else. Uh, hasn't been definitely JPAC, but there'll be somebody else as well. So if you're watching this now and you are thinking that lineups and Replay sound like something that you can you can do. Uh, send me a DM on Discord, and then on Team Four, I have Zini and 
Possibly Ash Return, possibly Coes on Tier 3. I uh, haven't really decided a second person on that team either yet. Alright. And usually Linga Pump uh, likes to help out as much as possible, uh, at least in IRK, so uh, I bet he'll be, yeah. be pretty active on that as well. And Team 1? We hold all, all, all the all the admins, <laughs> <laughs> all the I'm stuff. About it. Um, we we but... already contribute, okay? We have yeah. a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that uh, I haven't actually asked Sino about it again, but he did do it last season, so yeah. I don't know. I'm not too worried about Team One because I know most of the people or a lot of the people on here, so I think we'll be okay. And we have admins on this team, so we don't need uh, kind of like points of contact on how the like activity and dynamic are doing uh, on on the other teams because because we're on this team so we'll we'll be able to tell right away if there's a problem but if we're not on the team then we can kind of contact the team admins and make sure uh, no one's having inactivity problems without having to like go in and in invade the team spaces considering we're all playing in the league anyways all right um so um to jump into something else, uh, we need to discuss the map pool, guys. Yeah. So, uh, should we put up so, the? Well, just real quick before we go into the map pool. Yeah. I do want to like just put out a little PSA for any coaches, because like you said, like in the Discord, we do make uh, channels for each team. I highly encourage them to make a private Discord for their team. Because if nothing else, it builds a community and makes people feel a little more attached rather than like one chat channel and like one voice channel. Uh, like, I think that was a big part of like when I joined CPL in the first place, I got put on Team Drag. There's like a little community in the server. And that's why, like, since then, I've been like, can I stay with Team Drag, please? Because it, it feels almost like a clan at that point where yeah. you get to know all these people, you spend a whole season working with them. Like, a lot of people don't want to just reset that every time. And having that private Discord where you have like a almost like a home, as it were, like that really encourages that. So if there's coaches that don't already do that, I highly encourage it, please. Yeah. Well, I actually have another opinion on that. MCMS, we didn't have, we had extra channels on our team for on CPL server. We had extra voice channels. We did have, we there was a private server made at one point because the voice channels on CPL weren't working. But we primarily used the team channels on the CPL Discord, and it felt fine, and it felt really clean. And the MTMS chat on the CPL Discord like has been active literally this week, so it didn't the 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 chat didn't get deleted after the season ended. So it's been people have been in and out of there since last season. So. I don't think you have to make a, a private Discord. I think the, I think the most important thing to build community is just to play games together and be online at the same time, and honestly, just hang out in voice chat together. I think that that is the, the thing that builds the community the most. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not against making a private server, but I think you can also just do it on the regular server. I don't think you need to make a private yeah. server. Yeah. Some but, people but, end up with a lot of servers on their Discord, and it's yeah, I got uh, you on that nice one. to have <laughs> nice to have everything in one spot. Yeah. So the, the the big reason why I'm bringing that up though is I know particularly for Team Drag, we have a good portion of the people that weren't like in last season's Team Drag team still in the Discord. So building that community to it, like even if you decide like CBLs help me the part I need and I want to move on, if you have it all locked into a single server on CPL when the next season starts, you're kind of out, which sucks. Yeah, I guess, but it it can be nice for like newer like players that are new that haven't been part of that kind of like you're saying family beforehand. Um, not to feel like they are an outsider uh, joining a server that has a bunch of people that aren't on their CPL team currently. Just to kind of play devil's advocate a little bit here. No, that's, <laughs> that's, I think that's a fair yeah. point. And I do, like, I, I think, I'm not, yeah, I'm not like, thinking. Even more. with team one, like, I don't know what our solution is going to be, but I feel like I might feel a little bit weird hopping in on the, the team dragon discord. Um, you're, you're becoming dragged because it's like <laughs> because 
<laughs> well, see, this is what I mean. Like, there's a lot of people on that team that weren't on Team Dragon, especially with bigger teams. So I don't know what the solution is going to be. Um, but that that can be a little bit difficult for newer players jumping in that have a lot of yeah, and also uh, having uh, a lot of like old players. Uh, as a as a, a person who has a lot of Discord servers, uh, adding another one is uh, just making my Discord uh, very messy. So it's good to have everything on one server, um, in my opinion. Because a lot of people have a lot of servers on Discord, so um, yeah, I prefer to use the CPL Discord um, for that everything. Very interesting. Yeah, I just remember that was the big, like one of the big parts that really kept me involved in the league in the first place. Where it's just like the CPL Discord, I kept my eyes on too. So it's not like I abandoned that in favor of the team drag, but having yeah. that like one where I like I go here, I'm like, this is this is the dudes. This is hanging out yeah. with the family. I can understand that because dudes. I shouldn't say that there was a couple girls. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta be careful with that stuff. Yeah, but you hey. guys uh, are a tight <laughs> team, so um, Team Dragon has been for every season, right? Uh, so I guess I guess it's a, a, a bit tighter team compared to the other ones that has been thrown around a bit, maybe. So yeah, well, but, also semi fire, right? Yeah, so all the teams uh, should discuss this within the team how they want to set it up. Anyways, including yeah. team names, yeah, and team logos. Exactly. So we need to start talking about the map pool. I'm gonna add the boat. Yeah, this uh, little thing oh, here. He completely covered us up. Aggie yeah. doesn't like looking. At <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't like the art that I made. Yeah, I love the art that you made. He like <laughs> asked the me art, to the make art, great, and worry. then he was he, like. <laughs> He still has the Urk logo. Don't worry. We yeah. the priority. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm just going to remove the CPL logo and the CPL name there. And <laughs> they just show me my name and IRK there. So, and team reveal yeah. is very important. Is All this, right. Is this what you took when I said, like, hey, if you want to do it on the CPL Twitch, like, little comedy, is this what you fucking took? <laughs> yeah. <on> <laughs> Yeah, so. he's like, hey, please make a graphic. Let me just cover it with other things. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I'll make like a headshot for everyone. And he was like, why don't you just make the whole image? And I was like, well, I guess I could do that. And he was like, no, I got you. I'm just going to cover up Yo, the entire thing. I, I, so I just looked at the poll and I can't stop smiling if Bondrus <laughs> is in. Can we talk about maps now? Yeah, <laughs> let's talk about maps because you guys put all of the staff members in one team. So, um... <laughs> no, this is a public <laughs> vote. We still get one vote. This is a public choice. They wanted two gay people. I'm not. Hold on, I'm not saying. Why? That. Why isn't transistor? Uh, what does transistor? Uh, why? What? Six percent. I'll tell you why transistor didn't get votes. Protoss is popular. <laughs> Terran is popular, and no one wants to wall off for Zerg on Transistor. That's <laughs> okay. it. Simple all right. as that. All right. I feel all right. like we should be including Zerg favored maps like they do in uh, <laughs> world <laughs> tournaments because Zergs have so low of a win rate in CPL <laughs> compared to the other two races. <laughs> Okay, so that was the map vote, and as you can see, match point and uh, Overwatch uh, tied. Yeah, tied. So, how can you pick one of those? Originally, I was going to do like a two player map, a three player map, just picking two maps from this, but they tied. There's no way I can just pick one of them, right? So, no. I ended up putting in the top three maps from that vote into the map pool. So, we're actually going to have eight maps instead of seven maps this, this season. Yeah. Um, so, let's see if I can get the. Oh my god. That was huge. Whoa! What's Whoa! Going? What's happening? Uh, okay. Oh, I'm covering it oh, up here. <laughs> what oh, the hell okay. is happening here? Um, what what's happening with the colors? Yo, Longinus won. What is happening? Longinus was above. No, <laughs> had one more row. Give me Longinus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bloody Ridge match point Overwatch. Filthed Talcrot. I love. I like it. I like it. I love the majority of this um, map pool. I actually I'm really. A fan. Do. I like Eddie. I'm excited to play Eddie again. Yeah. yeah. So the idea here. I've played Eddie in a while, and I like Clayfields too. Yeah, Clayfields yeah. is the only one I'm not a fan of in this pool. How can you not like it? It's like it's kind of like Fighting Spirit. I don't know. 
kind of. It's like Circuit Breaker, no. just kind of. Well, the, uh, honestly, I don't like Circuit Breaker. I prefer Circuit Breaker if we're going to just have a four-player map. It just feels like another one of those. Actually, before we even get to that, we should actually discuss, hey, we're playing CPL, and CPL, a great place to learn is the ladder. Why don't we both have Circuit Breaker and Fighting Spirit in the map pool blindly? Because we yeah, hate them? we've done that previously. <laughs> I've, I, I mean, previous, all other seasons of CPL have kind of been like that, right? It's had Fighting Spirit and CB. And then last season, people were complaining, like, why do we have CB again? And we actually put it up to a vote if, for those who were around last season. We put, like, CB against, I think it was Andromeda. Yeah. And then CB mm -hmm. still won it. But, like, people were like, uh, do we really want CB and Fighting Spirit again? So I'm like, okay, you know what? Clayfields isn't bad for a standard map. Maybe we'll use that instead of CB. And the maker of Clayfields is a... Uh, from the foreign map making community he contacted me specifically he contacts me every season he's like hey put in some of my maps check out this map and this map he's like put them in he wanted me to put in bubbles which is kind of like fighting spirit too i was like there's no way i can put in bubbles and fighting spirit so fighting spirit wait there. how did oh. you how did you fail to mention that he also had a map called bubbles when i was saying that clayfield looks like it has <laughs> bubbles on it <laughs> i just wanted to see where that went you were talking about it. i was like what do you mean bubbles when you said bubbles it's not a map I'm not gonna. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> literally an orange fighting spirit with an extra bridge. Is what it is. So, but what um, is Clayfields is cool because it was an RSL. So that's like I, mean, I feel like that's a good initiative for RSL players, right? So for me, like I'm thinking from the learning perspective more than anything else, because like when you're talking about that uh, vote for CB versus Andromeda, Andromeda is my all-time favorite map. I voted for that, and I petitioned hard, and Dragon yelled at me. <laughs> <laughs> but I like one of the things I do appreciate about the fact that a lot of the maps we use, stuff like Match Point, is very classic from back in the day. Yeah. So what you could do is, if it's not a ladder map that you can actively practice against random people, stuff like Match Point, you could watch old vods of pro play and still get an idea. Stuff like Clay Fields, you don't really get that chance. You can't watch but, pros play that much, and you can't practice it on the ladder by yourself. On the flip side, we were just talking about, um, like, newer players starting to join teams. Um, if you're playing in BWCL or STPL, you do not get to play on ladder maps. The BD BWCL and STPL maps are bizarre. They are really, really weird. Um and even if they're you not call out kicks right now you want to call that <laughs> even if, even if they're not really <clears throat> weird maps they're definitely not ladder maps so none of these none of these maps seem overly crazy to me and i do think it's nice to like sulfid clayfields eddie fighting spirit those are all very standard maps overwatch very standard lately maybe tau cross i'm not super familiar with Match point and Bloody Ridge. Um, match point definitely. I'm not really looking forward to playing on, but um, I, I feel like overall this is a good map pool with like maps that are relevant right now um, in the pro scene. Plus we have foreign made maps because Eddie Eddie's foreign made as well, right? So Clayfields and yep. Eddie. Um, Overwatch is as well. And Overwatch, yeah. So I, I feel like I don't know. I feel like this is a really good balance, and I mean we still have Fighting Spirit in there. Yeah. And um, but none of these none of these maps are like weird to the point where you can't really play, play standard on them. No. I do like that compared to like Whiteout. Uh, I, I will die on that hill that Whiteout was a bad choice for a, a CPL map. Person. I liked Whiteout. I liked it as well. I was fine with um, it. At, yeah. Yeah, but, I bet you Zerg players did like Whiteout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think um checking the, the map pool here and um listening to you discuss this uh as an old school player uh i think it's um sometimes uh, the first cpl season that i joined uh, everyone was uh, talking about how to to do build orders and where to put uh, the gateways to make a perfect wall and so on and i think that at some point you also need to learn um how to play the game and not only learn how to do strategies and where to put things uh, because the game is uh, so much more fun if you can can adapt to maps instead of um, just saying this map doesn't work because I don't know where to put the wall. Um, and I think that's interesting with STPL and and BBCL with the map pools because then you really need to to show off that you can 
can play the game and not only strategies. I do really appreciate that we have three two-player maps because I do think one of the things about um, CPL that people, for whatever moral reason, are adamantly opposed to, cheese is a viable skill. Yeah. Two-player maps enable cheese practice. <laughs> yeah. I love how he was just talking about how we should only have standard maps, and now he's like... <laughs> Hey guys, you know what we should do? No, no, geez, I'm like, no. what is this? What am I no, listening to here? This is complete bullshit. No, I was, I was talking about that with that map, you could practice by yourself, which would have to be a ladder map, or stuff you could review, which has a lot of VODs, which is old Kespa maps. Well, now and we have Clayfield maps that you have to practice with your team, because we are promoting activity in teams. Aha! Aha! Uh, you, you got me on that one, I guess. <laughs> great point, great point. You got me G on that one. <laughs> There's still ladder maps there, too. Three ladder maps. One yep. from each level. One two-player yeah, map. No, like, two like I said, like every all the maps I'm super in favor of. Clay feels a little weird, and that's fine. Like I don't have to like the entire map pool. If I made the map pool, it'd be garbage. It'd be so bad. <laughs> yeah, you'd have third world in there for sure. <laughs> Third world for sure, Medusa for sure, Andromeda for sure. No, like I'd be playing in an era of Brood War but that no one would enjoy but me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm which not looking forward most... to playing on Match Point, but uh, I see in I the would. chat which Bones is asking which version of Bloody Ridge we always play the most recent map versions of maps. So that'd be Neo Bloody Ridge. Mm. Yeah, there will be a uh, map pack put together. In yeah. The... Eventually. And before the league actually gets started, that will be released. Um, when I write up the season rules and everything and post that on the Discord, I'll include the map pack with that as well. Great. So is the, is the intention for this map pool, like, because the games are going to be best of three, are you going to pick a two-player, a three-player, and a four-player map every week, or is it going to vary? It's going to vary uh, for the most part. Like, I'm going to try and get an equal number of playtime from each map. I've actually already gone through and started looking at or a map ordering, just to get uh, each map played the same number of times and in the same slot kind of thing. Because you know how we pick, you know, the first map, the second map, the third map. Well, am I going to pick a two-player map, three-player map, then four-player map every time? No, right? Um, just so, uh, you know, each map is played in a specific slot. So uh, it, one week we'll have Fighting Spirit will be the first map, and another week it'll be the second map, and another week it'll be the third map kind of deal. Just to try and get as much uh, equality across the maps as possible. Being nine weeks and eight maps, it's not going to quite work out math-wise, but um, it'll be close. So, what, What's everyone's on this map pool personal favorite map? Mm. Mm. Match oh, point, I think. That's a, uh, it's tough. Um, I might have to go with like Overwatch personally. Good PVC map. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me it's gonna be Eddie. Give me an inverted ramp all day, every day, please. Yeah, that's fun. He's good too. All right. Um, <clears throat> I was thinking about saying Eddie, but since he said Eddie, I'll go with Sulfid because I really like Sulfid. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I think Match Point. I love Match Point. I love all the two player maps, of course, but I'm a cheese player as well. So, <laughs> the, yeah. the way Match Point <laughs> plays, <laughs> when the way Match Point plays out, I love how it plays out because it enables there's good spots for cheese but you could really easily set up a good macro game and yeah. because of how the middle of the map is designed it's really about army movement in a way that people don't really think about compared to like a fighting spirit that map's just beautiful yeah definitely all right so do you have any questions in the chat um uh one i remember seeing earlier that is um that we got it from Time ruptured. He wanted to know the general cutoffs in MMR, how they reflect that the ladder's a little different since Koreans were more available to play against the Western world. Like, did that actually affect your decision? Like, you're saying tier 3 cuts at 1400, but 1400 now compared to 1400 a year and a half well, ago, very different 1400s. It's not exact either. That's just how I divided up originally to for when making preseason, right? And then it's based to on results and how players do their games. Like some players too are going to report MMR that maybe they haven't played in the new ladder since Koreans have been added. Or it also depends where you are. Like if you're closer to Korea, you're probably match more Korean. So MMR is not always the best um, metric. 
uh, we do our best. A lot of the players, we kind of know where they should be just from previous seasons uh, or people we've played against. Um, it's it's mostly preseasons to find out like some of the unknowns and uh, make sure people are going to be active during the season. Yeah. So we have a question from Avanoki here. Uh, how many games per week and how are they divided between tier? Uh, is that decided yet? Uh, it hasn't fully been decided, but in roughly, like I said, it's going to be uh, roughly about half per tier. We might change it up. Like tier threes tend to be a little bit more inactive, so maybe they'll have slightly less than half, whereas tier ones are, you know, generally stick around. So maybe it'd be slightly more than half. Um, but you can expect something kind of double what we had last season. So last season, right, we had three tier ones, four tier twos, and uh, two tier threes. So what's that, like nine games per week? So maybe something like in the 17 games per week per team this time. All right. Uh, are the maps pre-decided before every best of three? From yeah, all right, nice, one, two, three. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, we're, uh, we're just talking about that. Yeah, it's to uh, get get the variety. Because, um, uh, I mean, if we let people, we tried letting people choose one season, and a lot of people would always stick to Fighting Spirit CB. Yeah. And they lost. But not only that, it by having them predetermined or decided, it makes it easier for a wordy, especially, to keep track of uh, map stats and stuff. Like, when in the season we did where we let people choose the map, yeah, he went through like every replay to find what maps people were on just to get the map statistics. Like that's that's insane to me. So um, this just makes it easier if we have the set maps. You like, okay, this guy won this map. This guy won this map. This guy won this map. All right, Zerg wins this. Rodos wins that. Whatever. It makes it a lot easier to keep track of stats. Yeah, for sure. Um, can future cost CPL matches? <laughs> I told him to DM me. That sounds like something we should be discussing in private because I no, don't understand exactly. what that question is. <laughs> uh, a couple seasons ago, he got banned for yeah. uh, a bad. He was like drunk on stream and had a bad cast or something. Python didn't take too kindly to it and stuff. So yeah, that sounds exactly like a DM me per privately. We can discuss later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. But so we can I can lead that into a question. Hey, I want to cast CPL games. What should I do? Um, if you have any interest in casting CPL, you can be a bad player, you could be top end of the list, never cast it before, cast things all the time. We welcome anyone who has an interest in it, we'll find a way to get you in. If you're not experienced, we'll have you co-cast, so you have someone more experienced to guide you through the experience. If you have bad internet and can't host your own stream, we can make sure you co-cast someone that can host it for you so you don't have to worry about it. But basically, if you have any interest in it at all, you DM one of the casting coordinators, that's me or not Lemon, and we can get you involved in casting in some form. You just got to express the interest. We don't expect you to have perfect knowledge. We don't expect you to do like Artosis level like analysis and stuff. Like You could just cast like tier three games that's like they don't know what they're doing. You don't know how to cast it. Just get hype and have fun. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. If you have an interest, get involved. Yeah. And I think it's, it's really good that... Uh... You can like practice casting. Um, I made my debut uh, casting CPL games, and it's really fun. Uh, so, if you want to do it, you should uh, should really try and do it. Mm. Yeah, you're gonna see. I, stuff I'll definitely be casting before. a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure I'll be casting a little bit over the season. Maybe with Lise. Maybe with uh, Age. Yeah. We're gonna do some CPL casts. Yeah, uh, I'll most likely <laughs> try and do some casting as I always do. I'll so. probably do some as well. Yeah, so literally a cast coordinator in this chat. You're not going to say it maybe with him. No, nah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, Sage there never casts. I, don't know. I didn't. No, I, I never said cast. I've casted. I've casted with Aga before, and I've casted with Lise before. These are the two people that I cast with. Excuse me, <laughs> but maybe sure we can set something up. We just haven't casted before together, so it's why I didn't mention it. <laughs> All right, do we have any other questions in the chat? Doesn't seem like it. People are asking where I bought the desk. The... Mm. Yeah. I did the art, guys. They asked me <laughs> yeah, on Friday yeah. to make a... Yeah. The, the artwork is all strong. So uh, yeah. big shout out to her. It looks great, I think. So, I get, uh, oh, well, I'll ask you about my art. Is my mouth just open like I'm about to talk? Or is, am I frowning because I'm sad? <laughs> It is up to interpretation. 
Where are your headphones plugged into? Why are they on your knee? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, team channels from Seno. Uh, yeah, they'll be set up yep. after this cast. Yeah, we'll be starting to add players after the cast. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a. Uh, fun so, w- what would project. be the break? So, now that we have teams kind of settled and we're going to form it, when do you think the regular season is going to start? How big of a break between team formation and week one? Uh, depends how quickly I can get everything set up between a wordy, the stuff I need to get a wordy to do, and uh, just writing up the season rules and everything. Like, I already have the map pool we have picked out, but I already have maps set out for that. Um, so, yeah, it probably won't be this weekend, but may I, uh, next weekend, first games. Like, rough, rough guess, like, two weeks? I feel that like it's going to be two weeks, because yeah, yeah. um, there has to be, like, a graphic made for the, yeah, teams for the opening. Too. And then yeah, we exactly. need team logos, yeah. I Graphics mean, I think a while. Team Three already knows their team name <laughs> as their logo, but uh, <laughs> other teams for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, intact, intact's question: Will there ever be in the future a tier beneath four? Which currently there's not four. Don't listen to Anthem. Um, more <laughs> tiers between, or is this tier structure set in stone? I have a friend that I literally, literally just started playing, and what would we do? This sounds like a perfect player for tier three play. One yeah. of the things that people need to understand about CPL is you can join a team and get the learning experience, try to improve without the obligation of having to play every week and be a burden to your team if you're like not a lower level. Like you can just join and accept the learning and just opt not to play during the weekend. So it doesn't matter that if you're really new, join a team, get involved in the learning experience, and then when you feel comfortable, try to step onto the stage of it. But there's no pressure to do it. Exactly. Exactly. Also, we we introduced kind of like a CPL MMR system last season. So within your tier, you should be scaled to play a player um, close to your possible. level. Yeah. And there yeah. are some very new players in tier three. So it definitely would be an accommodation that we can easily make. Yeah, we, I would say we want new the... players. Yeah, I would say one of the things that maybe was a little behind the scenes and not public knowledge as well as it should have been was, let's say, for example, we set up the match for the week and there's like three players every tier. It's going to be like the highest player of each one against the highest player of the other. It's not like choice picked to be like, this is my preferred matchup or anything like that. So if you have like a new new player trying to jump in, it's like, I'm going to try to play this weekend. And they're like the bottom of their, their tier three, they're gonna play the other team's bottom of the tier three as well. They're not gonna play someone borderline tier two. Yeah, exactly. So even in your tier, you're like, oh, I don't think I should be tier one or I don't think I should be tier two. You're still gonna be matched against a tier two player that's in that same kind of unknown spot as you are, or tier one, you know? So you're like, oh, I'm a low, lower tier one player, I'm not gonna be able to compete. Where you're gonna be playing the lower tier one players of other teams. Uh, yeah. At least ideally based on CPL MMR and who signs up that week and everything, of course. But uh, yeah. 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 And there's like a real like thing that you got to think about where it's like, should I like try to get into these games if I don't feel really comfortable playing? Until you play in a match, you don't understand that it's like, it's like I'm playing on Sunday this week. That really motivates a lot of people to practice harder and take it a lot more seriously. And it adds a lot of engagement to the mm. game that you don't just get from random ladder matches where you get like cheese twice and I'm like, I'm out, screw this. So like there's a big draw to this. Even if you don't win the game, just like it's worth trying just to see. Yeah. Yeah, and that's actually a good thing you brought up there. Uh, something to add to that is yeah, for newer players that may not know, we do give you a week, like kind of like preseason, we give you a week to play your matches. So they'll be released on say Sunday. That's usually when we do. We release the matchups. And you'll know who you're playing that week, so you can see. Oh, I've got a PVZ this week or something, and prepare and on what maps, so you can prepare specific strategies or just practice that matchup specifically for that week to prepare for your matchup and show you your best possible games or you know improve that, your game in that, that particular match. Yeah, and honestly, being really prepared for your series like that um, helps. I think almost more than like being a really top MMR player in your tier like that MCMS took the the win last season and I'm pretty sure that's why it's because um I mean a the team was really active but b there was a lot of like really prepping the best of threes like the builds for each map and kind of like 
figuring that out. And I think that that's why they're like, they, we ended up taking like maybe some series that we shouldn't have taken um, just based on, on MMR. So that that's definitely legit. And it's a legit way to, um, to, to coach and to practice. Yeah. Mm. That's one of the biggest things for me that is engaging about the CPL to begin with is it's not about like the league's nice having your games cast sometimes. It's nice. Like, like things that could be like, this is like hard engagement. That, that sounds really fun, but it's like, it's just about meeting people to play the game, especially around your skill level. Like there's people I've met from the team I was on them. I still actively play with, but there's people from other teams where I'm like, I remember we played a dope game and I want to play more versus you because we're the same skill. And this is the best opportunity to learn something like that. Yeah. Did we have any other questions in the chat? Mm, no, just um, a question. We're not, we're not addressing Doc Holiday, so no, no, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Step, step up, Doc Holiday. There you go. Answer your question. Step. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, guys, do you want to add anything? Before we... um, if there's no other questions, I think we've covered uh, pretty much everything we needed to here. Yeah. Uh, I was still. I'm gonna encourage people. Public vote. Team one's team name should be "You're Not My Real Dad." Just vote for it. It's fun. Don't even wow. ask why. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm really looking forward to this season. Uh, feels like um, every team um, has a good setup with admins and coaches, and um, very fun to see that there was still <laughs> still so many people signing up, and that there's new players coming in as well. Absolutely. I love the fact that every year that I've been involved with this league in any capacity, I see it grow every year and it's still trending upward. Even though like Remastered came out a couple years ago, like it just feels like I'm glad that Brood War's still growing, even though it's hard to say why it is. <laughs> but I'm glad it is. <laughs> it's because CPL's awesome. Everyone wants to participate. Yeah. We <laughs> love CPL. Yeah. Yeah. And, Hopefully uh, it I was gonna say uh, specifically, if you want to see some of some of the thing that CPL is about later tonight, we're doing the CPL cast of a match that's gonna be like maybe in an hour and a half, six p.m. Eastern. Don't know how that translates. I'll make a post on the Discord. But if you want to check that out, you can see, yeah, it's like an hour twenty-five from right now. It's yeah. gonna be we're gonna see some games. You can see like the level player we're talking about, the high end tier one versus, or also maybe like the low end tier three. Really get an idea of what we do here. And you can just see that it's it's a community that you just want people to enjoy the game and be encouraged to learn more. That's all. Yeah. Um, if anyone has any like specific questions or problems or questions about their team or uh, coaches have any questions, uh, feel free to, and that you don't want to like post on a public server, feel free to shoot me a uh direct message and i will get that sorted out for you yeah. yeah any anyone on the staff if we if we can't handle it personally we'll forward you to the person that can you don't have to make yeah. it a public thing if you don't want to yeah and remember I've been to dealing a lot with like asking people's time zones and and talking to coaches so if you have something in that kind of of nature i'm happy to help you out. yeah and it's never too late to sign up so you can get on a reserve list, so anyone who still wants to sign up should sign up on on Team Liquid page, right? Or contact one of the staff members. Yeah, it might be better to contact one of the staff because we may not be looking at the uh, old signups as much. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. DM any staff member your application and we'll add you to the waitlist. And a spot opens up, we'll definitely get you in. All right. Great, guys. So, Snipe, any last words? Before we call a night. Oh, sorry, I was just reading Talk Holiday. What do you have? A crush on one of the staff? I asked them out. Um, <laughs> he just likes no. that frog, dude. He just wants to come over and see that frog. <laughs> I think he wants to ask out August. It's a pretty good um, frog. Yeah. It's my hat or hair or something. I don't know. <laughs> He's hanging out on my head anyway. Why not both? 
Why not? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Two and one. <laughs> um, it's yeah. iconic now. You can never change your avatar. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. <laughs> oh, it's been like that for a few years, so that's fine. I can leave it. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I don't think there's uh, anything else really to say. I'm um, looking forward to getting this season going and uh, playing with everybody and helping people learn. You know, particularly on my team, of course, because we want to win. But, uh, hey, yeah. All right, guys. So, stay tuned, people, because the CPL season will start soon. <laughs> And uh, that's it for this evening. Uh, this cast will be available to uh, rewatch, I guess, on the CPL channel if anyone missed it. So yeah, we're gonna rebroadcast it later for a more Euro-friendly time zone. But it's also gonna be available for VOD, and it's gonna be on our YouTube channel, which uh, we have to promote a little bit more. Last season, we kind of dropped the ball uploading to the YouTube. That will not happen this season. So once we start putting things on there, subscribe to that, subscribe to this Twitch channel, and subscribe to any of the casters you see getting anything done for the league. They all deserve your support because they're taking their free time to give you entertainment. The least you could do is click one button and get an email sometimes. Yeah, yeah especially yeah. Aggie for being our host. <laughs> shout out to Aggie. Yeah, I love hosting yeah, you guys. And I hope I'll be able to cast a lot of games this season uh, because I really enjoy it. Well, All right. Story cast with Royal Blue. You can join me sometime. Yeah, sure. Hi, um, wants to cast with me? We yeah. Are, like BSL casting duo. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cast with anyone when I have time. Well, I'll just cast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thanks everyone for tuning in, and thanks guys for uh, joining this um, this talk show. And um, we all look forward to the new season. So, have a great evening or day, everyone, and um, we'll see you all very soon. Take care. Bye.